Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this paint filter effect which you can apply to any image or any movie clip. It's fully procedural and we're going to make it into a node group for convenience. You can change any of the settings on the fly to get instant results. So without further ado, let's get to it. Open up Blender, we'll go to Edit, Preferences and under Add-ons type in node for node wrangler and then enable the node wrangler here by clicking that checkbox and then click this button and click save preferences delete the default cube i'm going to hit numpad one to go into front view and then going to hit shift a image and i'm going to choose mesh plane select an image that you want to use or a movie clip i'm going to choose a picture of my cat simba i'm also going to change the transform because i want the image to be brought in pointing on the plus y axis i'll then click import images as planes and there's my cat simba i then drag my cursor to the bottom left until i see this crosshair and i'm going to left click and drag this up. I'll change this from 3D viewport to shader editor. Excellent. Let's just drag this across over here. I'm going to delete the principal BSDF. I'm then going to plug the color from the image texture straight into the surface of the material output. I'm going to hit N to close that end panel. Let's just make this a bit bigger. With the node wrangler enabled, I'm going to click this image texture and I'm going to hit Control T. And that will add a mapping node and a texture coordinate. I'll just grab these and I'll drag them out of the way over here. Maybe I'll drag this all the way over to here. So the first node we're going to add is going to be Shift A and we go for texture and we choose noise texture and I'm going to pop that in between the mapping node and the image texture. It's gone a bit crazy. I'm going to set the detail to 15. I'm going to change it from 3D to 4D and I'm going to change the scale to 25. I'm now going to add three Veronoi textures. Shift A, go to texture and we're going to choose Veronoi. I'll pop that up here. We're going to set this to 4D. Maybe I'll drag this up a bit. In fact, I'm going to disconnect this noodle by holding down control, right mouse button click and drag. I'll then hit Shift D, bring this down, Shift D and we'll bring this down again. I'll bring this noise texture down and I'm going to drag the vector from this mapping node into the vector of each of these Veronoi textures. And then going to hold down shift, right mouse button click and drag just to add a control point here. We we'll try and keep this reasonably neat. And for this middle noodle, I'm going to hit shift A, converter, and we're going to choose vector math. And I'm going to pop that in between here. I'll then add three math nodes. So that's shift A, converter, we go for math, pop that one there. I'm going to hit shift D, pop that one there, hit shift D. And I'm going to pop this one here. This first one, we're going to change to subtract. The second one, we're going to change to divide. And the third one, I'm going to change to multiply. I'll then take the factor from the noise texture into this top math node. I'll then plug this top math node into the multiply and this node into the bottom socket of the multiply. I'll then plug the result from that into this vector math node set to add. So now I need to take the vector from this vector math into the vector of this Veronoi texture. And I'll do the same for this Veronoi texture here. I'm then going to add a noise texture, shift A, go to texture, and we're going to choose noise texture. I'll just pop that up here. I'm going to keep it set to 3D, but I'm going to increase the roughness to 0.75. I'll then hit shift A, and I'm going to search for separate, and we'll choose separate color. I'll then take the color from the noise texture into the color socket of the separate color node. I'll then hit shift A, and we go for color, and we choose mix color. We're going to have three of these, so I'm just going to drag this across. I'll just drag the mix color node down to round about there. I'm going to hit shift D, bring this down to around about here, shift D, and we'll take this one to here. So I'm going to take the red value from the separate color, and I'm going to plug that into the mix factor of the color mix. I'll then take the position into socket A for the top Voronoi texture and the position from the second Voronoi texture into socket B. We'll then plug the result of that into socket A and we'll take the green socket from the separate color into the mix factor of this mix color node. I'll then plug the position from the third Veronoi texture into socket B and the result for that we'll plug into socket B of this mix color. Now we're going to take the original vector from the UV coordinates and we'll plug that into socket A. And now if I plug the end result into the vector of the image texture you can see we're starting to get some results here. I'm just going to turn the factor all the way to one for now. I'm going to hold down shift and left click and drag and I'm going to just bring this up just so we can see where it's going. I'll neaten this node structure up towards the end but this will do for now. So now we need a controller for all these W factors here, here, here and here. So for that, for now, I'm just going to add a value node. Shift A and search for value and we're going to choose value. I'll then plug this value into the W factor on this noise texture. I'll then plug it into the W factor on this Veronoi texture, the W factor here, and finally the W factor on this Veronoi texture. 
So now if I move this value node, all the W factors are moving simultaneously. Let's just drag this out of the way for now. Maybe I can quickly neaten this up. I'll hold down shift, right mouse button click and drag. And then I hit G just to drag that noodle point over to here. I'm gonna add another one. Shift, right mouse button and drag. I'll just grab this over to here. Now we need another value node to alter the scale of each of these Veronoid textures, but we want them offset because we don't want all the scales to be the same. In order to do that, I'm gonna hit Shift A and search for value and we're going to add a value node here i'll then hit shift a and converter and we choose math i'm going to set this to multiply and the bottom value i'm going to set to two i'm going to hit shift d and duplicate that math node i'll plug the value into the top socket here i'll then plug the multiply into the top socket here and i'll plug the result from this multiply into the scale the result of this multiply into the scale of this veronoid texture and then the original value from the value node into the scale of this Veronoi texture. I'll set a value of, let's say 25 for now as a default. So this one will inherit a value of 25. This one will inherit a value of 25 multiplied by two, which will be 50. And this one will inherit a value of 50 multiplied by two, which is 100. Let's just neaten this node structure up a bit just so we can see where everything's at. It's looking a bit messy at the moment. Again, we'll neaten this up in a bit. Let's just add a couple of control points here by hitting shift, right mouse button, clicking and dragging. So now this pattern scale, this value node here, we also need to plug it into this socket here. So I'm just gonna drag this noodle into the bottom socket of this divide node. It should be working a lot more better now. Excellent. And I'll set the top value on this divide node to two. I think maybe I'm gonna change this pattern scale to 50. So I'm gonna make a node group out of all of these. So I'm gonna box select all of these nodes. I'm gonna hit Control G, which will add them as a node group. I'll then hit Tab to exit out of the node group. And we'll call this Paint Filter. I'll then tab back into the node group. I'm gonna start exposing the values in this node group. We're gonna to have to add a couple more nodes in the mix here. So the first one will be Shift A and we choose Converter, Combine, XYZ. And we're gonna use this Z value as a controller. So I'm gonna plug the vector from the Combine XYZ into the location of this mapping node. I'll then hit Shift A, Converter, and I'm gonna choose Math. And I'm gonna set this to Multiply. I'll then plug the result from the Combine XYZ into the top socket of the Multiply node. I'll then plug the value from the multiply node into the scale of this noise texture on the multiply node. I'm gonna set the value to one. And this is gonna control the W factors. So this value node controls the W factor for the Veronoi textures and for the noise texture. We're gonna use this multiply node to replace this because we want to be able to expose this value here into our group input. So I'm gonna plug this multiply node into the W factor of this noise texture. I'll then hold down shift, right mouse button click and drag. And then I can drag the result from this multiply node into here now we can delete this value node so now this becomes the controller so now i'm going to expose the values into this group input so with this noise texture i'm going to take the scale factor and i'm going to drag this into the group input here i'll then hit n to open up the n panel and i'm going to click this group button here and where it says scale i'm going to rename this to warp scale i'll then take this value node which controls the pattern scale i'm going to zoom in and hold down shift right mouse button strike through i'm going to delete this value node and i'm going to drag this bottom socket into the noodle point here i'm going to select that input i'll set the default value to 50 and we're going to rename this to pattern scale i'll tab out of the node group and i'm going to set the pattern scale to 50 i'll tab back into the node group i'll then drag this z factor from the combine xyz and put it into the bottom socket i'll then rename this group socket to animate w plus z i'll then take the distortion from this noise texture and pop it into the bottom socket here i'll keep that named as distortion i'm going to zoom out and we'll expose this mix factor so i'm going to take that mix factor and i'm going to drag it into the bottom socket of the group input and i'm going to rename this to mix factor we've got one more value to expose so from this multiply node here expose this value from this multiply node i'm going to plug it into the bottom socket of the group input and i'm going to rename it to warp multiplier i'm gonna hit n to close that end panel i'm just gonna drag this up i'll just neaten this node structure it's gonna be a case of adding control points so shift right mouse button click and drag shift right click and drag and then maybe select two noodle points hit s y zero to line them up and then shift right click drag and then g and then select these two s x zero so i'm just gonna do that to neaten up the node structure and i'll get right back to you as soon as i'm done
Okay, that's the final node structure there. Don't know if you want to take a screenshot. You won't have to go back into this node structure at all. So I'm going to hit control space just to exit full screen mode. That's basically the entire node structure. I have forgot to rename this value here. So I'm going to rename this value. So I'm going to hit N to open up my M panel where it says value. I'm going to rename this to warp multiplier. I'll then tap out of the node group. And this is our node group here, the paint filter. And to work this is pretty easy. All you have to do is plug the result into the vector of an image texture or a movie clip. And to animate it, we're gonna use this animate W plus Z value here. So we can either add keyframes here or we can add a driver. I'm gonna add a driver to mine. So I'm gonna type in hash frame divide by 1000. I'm gonna change the warp scale to zero. I'll just show you what these settings are. So the pattern scale, is the size of the Veronoi pattern here. So if I reduce this down to, let's say five, you can see the patterns appearing there. Okay, I'm just gonna increase this. So if I set it to 500, it will be really fine detail, which you can hardly see. Set it to 100, it's gonna be slightly bigger detail and basically the lower the value, the bigger the pattern size. So I'm gonna set my pattern to, let's say 25 for now. So now if I push play, you can see it's changing the W factor. So now if I add this warp scale, it adds a noise, kind of like a water effect, which distorts the original Veroni texture pattern. So if I set this to, let's say 10, and if I push play, you can kind of see this water effect going over the top. So the warp multiplier only affects the speed of change of the warp noise pattern. So if I push play and if I increase this number to 10, you can see that the water effect is going faster. Maybe I'll set it to 50. Now it's going really fast. A default value of one is pretty good with most scenarios, but you'll have to adjust these to cater for the look that you're going for. So I'm gonna set my pattern scale to 50 and I'm gonna set my warp scale to maybe 25 change the warp scale down to 15 maybe I can increase the distortion to 1 maybe and finally we've got the mix factor where we can transition back to the normal image of course we can use this with a movie clip so I'm going to mute that image just make this window a bit bigger. I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to Image, and we'll choose Mesh Plane. We're just gonna select a random video. I'll just select this one, for example. We'll hit to line on the plus Y. I'll click Import Images Planes. And now if I go to my shader editor, I'm gonna delete the principal BSDF. I'm gonna connect the color onto the surface of the material output. I'm also gonna have cyclic turn on, and I'm gonna set my scene frames to 480 frames because there's 480 frames in the movie clip. So I'm gonna type in 480, and then I hit Play. This is all it does, it just moves about gently like that. If I skip back to frame one, I'll then hit shift A, go to group, and I'm gonna select that paint filter group, and I'll plug the result into the vector of the movie clip. Now if I push play, it's always got the same noise pattern, but if I go to this animate W plus Z, I'll type in hash frame divide by 1000, I'll then hit play. Now it's animated. Maybe I can reduce the warp scale to 10 it's just finding a pattern that you like maybe i can increase the warp multiplier by let's say four maybe decrease the pattern scale to 25 maybe i can add a bit of distortion maybe a bit less and maybe i can reduce the mix factor to 0.25 so this is without and this is with so that's the paint filter if you found this tutorial useful like and subscribe have a great day level up and thanks for watching.